Hello. Wilson is empty. This is Chris Andrews with the in IELTS Support Canadian Mosaic English Language School Testing System conducted on the 25th of August 2017. Hello. Can Hello. you tell me your full name, please? Uh, my full name is Rehem Muhammad Yusuf. And what can I call you? Rehem. And can you tell me where you're from? Uh, I'm from Egypt, from Holland, Cairo. And so in this first part, I'd like to ask you some questions about yourself. So let's talk about what you do. Do you work or are you a student? Uh, I have been working for the last five years, actually. And what do you do? Uh, I work in a medical, as a medical representative in a pharmaceutical company uh, in Egypt. And how long have you been working there? Uh, like I said before, I have been working there for the last five years. And do you like your job? Yes, actually, I do like it a lot. Why? Uh, I think it's really an important job for people. It increase, we work to increase the awareness for the doctors, uh, how they use medications uh, and how to give to the patient. And also, we can help the doctors to use uh, drugs in a very good way or in the proper way uh, with the patient. Let's move on to talk about entertainment. What types of entertainment are popular where you come from? Hello? Hello, continue please. Okay, uh, one of the most important uh, entertainment in my country uh, is uh, the ancient places. We go there and enjoy ourselves and sometimes and also going to the sea resorts uh, is one of, one of the most entertainment here in Egypt. Why are these things so popular? Um, because they are you can find the beach in many of the cities in Egypt, many of the, of the you can find them. Um, also, you can find a lot of ancient places to go and to really have good uh, time with your friends and your family. Uh, it's really good, good to do, Yanyi, okay? It's a really good thing to do. Okay, now I'm going to give you a question and I'd like you to talk about it for two minutes. Before you talk, you have one minute to make a plan. Do you understand? Yes, I do. So here is your question. Describe a time when you were asked to give your opinion in a questionnaire or survey. You should say what the questionnaire was about, what you, why you were asked to give your opinions, and explain how you felt about it. Can you begin planning now, please? Okay. All right, so remember you should speak for two minutes. Can you begin speaking now, please? Okay. Um, I once had a questionnaire about the media and their influence uh, on the young people or on us uh, and how they are really affect us in, in our daily life. Uh, the media really take a lot of our time and uh, or not. Uh, the questionnaire was really good one it was um, I felt that 
or I, I think it revealed to me how much did this media and uh, are really take from my time and how I'm just a project to them or uh, I'm, I think I, I was how much uh, it affected me in my daily life um, and uh, I think it was a really good one I really uh, felt good about it uh, and this, I think um, it was a really good one remember that's all do you think that questionnaires are an effective way for companies to learn information about their customers? I think, yeah. Um, if they use it on a wide range of people, yes, I think it will affect the results. The results will affect their opinions and will help the companies to develop their, um, their perspective towards their customers. And so, are people usually honest on questionnaires, do you think? As long as uh, I just fill it as an anonymous, I don't have to give my name or uh, any details. I think, why not? Why we are not going to be honest? We should do. Uh, because we, we even face some questions that we didn't think about it for, for a long time. Uh, like, um, like this question, how media can affect me? I never thought about it before, but when I, saw the question i start to ask myself so yeah we should be honest with this question is and so how do you think most people feel when they must do a questionnaire or a survey like i said i i think it's okay sometimes it's really been a burden to us to to answer a questionnaire if you don't have much time or it's not really or it's a long one but if it's really easy questions and um, and the way the question is good uh, I can really answer it quickly and it's not going to take much time or much thinking it will be okay I think I'm, I'm not going to be irritated from it mm -hmm. so what kind of companies usually use questionnaires I think the media one the ones that depend on media, um, the one that sells clothes or uh, stuff like that, uh, the, the, the food one, the one that also said, sell food, they also depend on questionnaires and the Facebook now, on social media now, they start to put their questionnaires on there where we can answer it frequently. And <clears throat> Do you think that there will be more online questionnaires in the future? Yes, I think it's it's came uh, an industry now. You fill this questionnaire and you'll take some money. I've been surprised about that. You you fill a hundred of questionnaires and surveys, and you take some money in return. Um, yeah, I think it's became so so deep and start to uh, increase highly this days. Thank you very much. That's the end of your speaking test. Thank you. Okay. And so, Rehan, if you've gotten your copy of the IELTS band descriptors, we'll start on this side here with fluency and cohesion. And so, if you look at band six, band six talks about is willing to speak at length. And so you did, you tried to keep going and tried to keep going. Um, your part two, you only spoke for a little more than one minute, and so that's a problem. You need to practice speaking so that you can get to two minutes. It's a difficult thing to do. Nobody usually in society, in any language, speaks for two minutes without stopping. Only teachers and politicians. And so this means that you need to practice this to get better at it, and then you'll be able to give a full language sample. Um, other than this, the description continues on to say, speaks at length though may lose coherence at times due to occasional repetition, self-correction or hesitation. And so, because you're not really confident, you say the same thing again. 
and then you say it over again. And then you kind of repeat yourself again a little later on. And so it's this way of speaking where you kind of keep going by saying the same things over that is the exact case for a six for fluency and cohesion. For lexical resource, it says for a six again, it has a wide enough vocabulary to discuss topics at length and make your meanings clear in spite of inappropriacies. And so, yes, this is what I heard from you. You sometimes couldn't find the word that you wanted, but you could paraphrase and you could get your meaning across. You could fix any problems that you had when you had problems with finding the right word. And so not high enough to reach a seven where you can use the words a little more flexibly, but more than a five where you can only describe the general idea of things. So grammar. Next, a mix of simple and complex structures in six again. And so once you got a little bit warmed up and you started speaking more, when we got more into part three, you started to use some more complex sentences. And I heard words like which and while. And so this is good. Um, you don't have the accuracy for it yet to get a seven, but you have all the pieces that you need there. And so you just need to strengthen it a little. And pronunciation. Uh, your pronunciation is no problem. Um, simple pronunciation, you're getting, you're up to a six, I would say, in pronunciation as well. But to get to a seven, you need to get your sentences nice and long so that you can get a flowing to your pattern of speech. And after this, then the properties of a seven can start to be measured. But if you're just uh 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 you're not getting past a 5.5 or so with your pronunciation. And so you've got a flat six, 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 six for what you spoke today. Uh, practice makes perfect. Continue and go through all of these Cambridge books, like where the test came from today, our test questions today are from book eight. And practice from speaking two minutes of or one minute of practice, sorry, one minute of preparation and two minutes of speaking. Thank you very much, Simon, for volunteering. Who's next? Speak up, please. Yes, I'm next. Minute, please. Minute, please. Okay, the Mr. Test here. Um, we haven't get six, band six? Yes, Shima was band six. Okay. Again, I am no longer an active examiner, and so these are my own opinions, these band scores, and you should be using them for your own training purposes only. Thank you. So, okay. let's begin. Uh, and now, Mr. Mohammed Fathi, Mr. Mohammed Fathi, you can go. Yes. On. Yes, thank you very much for introducing me. This is the mock speaking test for the IELTS Support and Canadian Mosaic English Language School training system. The candidate is Mohammed, and the examiner is Chris Enders, number 918-112-8955. Hello, my name is Chris Enders. Can you tell me your full name, please? My full name is Mohammed Fatih Abdul Baqi Abdul Wahid, and yes, you can call me Mohammed. It's me. And can you tell me where you're from, Mohammed? Uh, I'm from Egypt, but I live in Saudi Arabia and work there. Hmm. And so, in this first part, I'd like to ask you some questions about yourself. And so, let's talk about where you live. Okay. Do you live in an apartment or do you live in a house? No, I just live in uh, an uh, accommodation of a hotel. Just uh, I'm renting a room in a hotel. Mm -hmm. And uh, where is it in the city? Uh, it's in the uh, city of Mecca. Because most of the accommodation here is uh, just hotels. So they, we are, you are more likely to get uh, such kind of accommodation, a uh, room in a hotel. So what do you like about where you live? 
uh, it's just the holy city of Muslims around the world. Uh, even you know, this uh, these days are the, the the pilgrimage season is coming is coming on around maybe just one week ahead, and uh, every every everywhere here is getting very crowded, and you can see people from all around the world. They are mixed in same same clothing. They are looks like each other, but uh, you cannot differentiate between each other. Who is the poor? Who is rich? Who is the who is this? Who is that? Just by by clothing, because they are Let's all. Let's go on to clothes. talk about the weather. So, okay. what is the weather in your country like? My country or the, my resident country? Whatever. Whatever. Let's talk about the, the my current residence. The, it's here in Mecca. The weather actually is. Uh, is atrocious. The temperatures are are blistering around all the, the year, except maybe two months or maybe just one month. The temperature goes a little bit normal. I mean normal. This means that you you, you will not change your uh, you you're not gonna, gonna uh, be in need of uh, changing your clothes to to uh, to a little bit heavier clothes. But uh, you will still Does wearing your, your summer clothes. Affect your mood. Uh, actually. Well, uh, my first stay, maybe my first couple of months, uh, I, got, I got used to uh, to get a little bit nervous because of the temperature. But now I'm not because a little bit used to the uh, the situation, the temperature, and all the environment here. We're a little bit getting used to. Okay, so now I'm going to give you a topic, and okay. you think about it for two minutes. Before okay. you talk, you'll have one minute to prepare some notes. Do you understand? Yes, I understand. All right. Then your topic is the second topic that was posted today. Describe a restaurant that you enjoyed going to. You should say where that restaurant was, why you chose this restaurant, and what type of food you ate in this restaurant. Then explain why you enjoyed eating in this restaurant. Begin planning now, please. Very long, two minutes. It's okay. All right. Can you begin yes. speaking now, please? Okay. Uh, the, the restaurant I'm going to talk about is, uh, uh, is a, a very famous restaurant in Jitta. It's called Chirimpi. And uh, basically, from its, its own name, it's, uh, it's come a little bit about seafood and different kind of, uh, of foods. And uh, it's located there in Jitta, uh, just on the Corniche. So the weather is a little bit good, and the, the, the environment around is is uh, somehow catching. Uh, and why I I got uh, I got in love with, with such kind of food because they have in, in this restaurant they have a variety of foods, uh, Turkish foods, Arabian foods, and uh, Lebanese food. That's why I a little bit enjoyed it uh, so, so much. Uh, it, it basically uh, depends on the, the grilled uh, meat, the barbecues, the, the Turkish bakery, and lots of the diversity of, uh, uh, of salad. Okay, and uh, if we if we could talk about why I enjoy this one, because it uh, when you when you little when you little get in touch with such kind of food, you uh, you you immediately realize that. Uh, the food is uh, too much healthy, and uh, the way they are made in the food, they are making the food is is very good. Uh, they're not using too much oils, so, which is which can be harmful for so for some kind of people. They can cause some some kind of uh, of uh, health problems to them. Uh, and that, uh, you you can feel a little bit relaxed, not not just relaxed, but 
comfortable. Your uh, your stomach is comfortable when you eat this food, especially the salad and and the mixture of uh, of, of the different uh, flavors they're using over there. So I think it's uh, it's a very good experience that, that I had before, and uh, uh, almost every time I, I go to Jeddah, especially the Cornish, I try I try this this again and again. Uh, it's not just about you. Thank you. That's the end of your. Oh, it's not the end of your speaking test. So <laughs> let's talk about restaurants in general. Um, okay. Is it expensive to eat out where you live? Yes, it's expensive because that's why I advise very much to to be trained for uh, for home cooking. It will save you a lot of money, a lot of uh, a lot of health also. Mm -hmm. you know, not all the restaurants are good, are good outside, so you have to trust your own mm -hmm. uh, handmade uh, food, not to trust other people when they make your food. When they make your food. Is cooking difficult? And no, cooking is not difficult. Cooking, you know, it's some, some kind of, uh, of an art. Uh, some people, they, they don't have this taste of an art, and uh, some, some other people, they, you know, they enjoy the making food or, or you know, making diversity of food. It depends on their mood. When their mood is a little bit going good and everything is going smooth with them at work and, and their, their normal life, they can produce lots and lots of, uh, of, of diversity of food. Uh -huh. uh, so but when they also, how do people learn to cook? Uh, basically from their mothers, I think. Because I, same like me, I'm, I'm living on my own for five years. Uh, that's why my mother is the basic source for me for, uh, for, for, for teaching me how to make food and different types of, different types of food. Uh, sometimes when I want to uh, explore new types of food, I ask her how to do this, how to do this, and uh, what is the, what's the most proper way to, to make it delicious and attractive for me to eat. And she guides me in a very, 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 good, very, very good way. So, um, do people at home usually cook their own cultures type of food or do they cook a variety of foods from a variety of different places? Uh, no, we don't, we don't have a variety from different places because we have our own variety actually in Egypt. So when you, when you get a little bit get, get nervous or uh, get a little bit angry about some, some kind of food, you can try another one. We have lots of lots of uh, and, and diversity, and you have you can diver diversify your uh, your you. food very, very much. So very it's okay. much. That's the end of your speaking test. Thank you very much. All right, Mohammed, you did pretty good. And so, if everybody who's watching, if you listen to Mohammed, he was really good at speaking for a long time. He could keep going and going and going. And so, this is a sign that you're getting above six. So. The question is, is it an eight? So let's look at the eight. Speaks fluently with only occasional repetition or self-correction. Hesitation is content related, not searching for vocabulary words. And your development is coherent and appropriate. Let's look at seven. May demonstrate language related hesitation at times some repetition, right. some self-correction. Uses a range of discourse some markers. Yeah. So what I'm seeing here is you're in a seven. You have some false starts sometimes and you start over and get yourself going and then you're able to go, but there is still a little bit of false starts. And so you're doing well. You're at a seven, I would say, for your fluency and coherence. Lexical resource as well. You're doing quite good here. You've got some high level words. You can talk about specific details and name specific things. And so I'm going to say you're doing a strong seven for your vocabulary and your lexical items. Um, grammar. Grammar was pretty good too. Frequently produces error-free sentences, though some grammatical mistakes persist as a seven, I think so. Eight is produces majority of error-free sentences with only very occasional inappropriacies. And so that's a very high bar to meet. And I'm not sure that I heard that most of your sentences 
were um, error free. And then pronunciation. Pronunciation in band eight says a wide range of features. Um, I think you could be doing this, but because you're speaking really quickly without any pauses, it's it's hard to hear your tones and it's hard to hear the expression in your voice. And this is the sound of a six when it's speaking too quickly. Five speaks too slowly because they're thinking too much. Six speaks too quickly because they're trying to rush it out. Seven slows down and is more confident with himself. And so <clears throat> you've got, <clears throat> I would say, halfway between the eight and the six. You've got some positives of eight, but you've got that negative of a six, which pulls you into a seven. And so you're so band seven. Please, please, I have just a small question, please. Go ahead. Uh, which is better for the IELTS test, to speak slowly or to speak fast? To speak the right speed is the best. Speaking too slowly is a five. Speaking too quickly is a six. Speaking the right speed is a seven plus. Okay, so you, you, you can judge my, my speaking. It's a little bit fast speak, right? Yes, this is what I said. And so you need to focus on not slowing down the pronunciation of your words, but putting pauses between sentences. Yes. Putting pauses between your main ideas and giving yeah. make, that's, make the intonation for the, the flow of word. Yeah. Yes. So okay. good job. Continue practicing. Thank you very much. Okay. Who's next? Chris? Yes. Uh, today's, uh, you gave us uh, a hard band. It's not easy to get a high band. A different, I'm scoring harder than before? Yep. You think so? It's good, good. So we can train more and more and more. Well, you, I'm not sure. It should be the same every time though, if it's going to be standard. I think that I am giving it the way that I always give it. Yes. Or at least I'm hoping we can that take, uh, in a standard way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Should we, we can take now, Mr. Callen. Yeah, let's go on. <laughs> okay. So, Mr. That? Khaled? Mr. Khaled, uh, in a nickname, uh, Luda. Okay, thank you, Ahmed. Go on, please. Okay, this is the mock speaking test for the IELTS Support Canadian Mosaic English Language School Training System. The candidate is, uh, it says Luda. The examiner is Chris Enders. Hello, my name is Chris Enders. Can you tell me your full name, please? Uh, hello, Chris. My name is Khaled Magdamin. Uh, uh, you can uh, call me Khaled. And can you tell me where you're from? Uh, I'm from uh, Egypt, um, uh, definitely Al Bahira, which is located at the north of uh, Egypt. Mm -hmm. And so, in this first part, I'd like to ask you some questions about yourself. So, let's talk about what you do. Are you a worker or do you study? Uh, yeah, I uh, work. I'm a worker uh, from uh, five years ago. I work for the, the Egyptian Atomic Energy Authority. I'm an uh, assistant lecturer. Uh, I uh, just have finished my master in chemistry uh, last year. Mm -hmm. And so, how long have you worked there? Uh, I have worked there for uh, five years nearly. Mm -hmm. And do you like your job? Uh, of course, I love, uh, I love uh, the job. Uh, it's my uh, favorite job from the first. Uh, I thought of the world data from the Faculty of Science. Hello? Yes, continue. Okay. 
after I have graduated from the Faculty of Science, I uh, started uh, my job as a researcher at the uh, Egyptian uh, Japanese uh, University. Then I pursued uh, to the Egyptian Atomic Energy Authority. So I uh, chose this, uh, this job. Let's move on to talk about sports. Um, what types of sports are popular where you come from? Uh, football. Uh, I love uh, football uh, very much. I uh, play it and watch it. I play it on PlayStation. Uh, so I um, I'm very interested in uh, football and I uh, um, uh, follow it uh, everywhere. Why? Uh, because it's uh, my first hobby. Uh, uh, for my when I was a child, I um, I. Uh, I want to play uh, football and uh, become a professional player. Uh, and also, I love uh, Zamalek, which is uh, my favorite uh, team. He uh, is my beloved team in Egypt. And uh, uh, I uh, wanted to be a player. Uh, there. Do older people and younger people play the same types of sports? Of course, no. Uh, uh, some playing uh, football, uh, which is uh, the most favorite and the and the most popular here in Egypt. Uh, uh, some other uh, like play uh, handball also, which is favorite because our uh, national team in handball is uh, also special and uh, and uh, high ranked in this uh, game. Okay, now I'm going to give you a topic, and I'd like you to talk about it for two minutes. Before you talk, you have one minute to make a plan. Do you understand? Yeah. Okay, then your topic is the third posted task. It is from test three in Cambridge Isles book eight. Describe a meeting you remember going to at work, college, or school. You should say when and where the meeting was held, who was at the meeting, what the people at the meeting talked about, and explain why you remember going to this meeting. Begin your planning now, please. Okay. All right, so remember you've got two minutes to speak. Can you begin speaking now, please? Uh, okay, um, I'm uh, now going to uh, talk about um, uh, the first workshop of the International uh, Atomic Energy Authority, which was held at uh, Tunisia uh, in uh, 2014. Uh, I was a participant and I was a representative of the Egyptian Atomic Energy Authority. I um, have gone there with uh, my professor. Uh, I was uh, going there to uh, represent my uh, uh, publication, my last publication about um, uh, the corrosion and uh, using uh, some uh, new materials uh, uh, to uh, uh, using uh, some new material uh, to protect metals from corrosion. Um, um, at this uh, meeting, um, I uh, gave a talk about um, uh, my master work and uh, and uh, uh, and the uh, facilities which you have uh, it, uh, at our uh, organization. Um, uh, so, what you also talk about? What is um, also, the other people uh, talk about uh, their, um, their research and uh, everyone uh, for, uh, we who represent uh, its uh, country talked about uh, uh, the last advances uh, they scored in, 
in the field of uh, atomic energy. Uh, so it was uh, um, uh, um, uh, a step which helped me uh, to uh, to meet uh, new people and uh, uh, learn more about their work. And I also enjoyed um, uh, um, uh, visiting a new country, uh, which was uh, very fascinating. And I uh, have visited uh, the tourist uh, places there and uh, recognized. Uh, uh, no. We've been talking about a meeting that you went to, and I'd like to continue talking about meetings. So let's think about the types of meetings that we have. Um, do people in different jobs have different types of meetings? Of course, uh, there are uh, different type uh, of um, of people and different types of, uh, of jobs uh, who are participating. There was uh, engineers, uh, doctors, um, uh, chemists, and physicians. Um, uh, it was it's uh, it's a great opportunity to meet uh, people uh, who work in another fields and uh, to learn um, about um, uh, the work that other people from other branches uh, do. Uh, at How has technology affected meetings? Of course, the technology play uh, a, a, a great role uh, in uh, meetings. And now we can uh, do uh, um, an online meetings and uh, conferences uh, online. Uh, the new technology uh, provides uh, a technique and uh, a tool uh, which uh, help facilitating um, uh, organizing new meetings uh, between uh, people from uh, different countries uh, which are so far from uh, each other. Mm -hmm. um, should meetings have a clear plan? Uh, in my opinion, I think uh, the, the meeting should have uh, a clear plan uh, so uh, the participant can uh, know what activities are involved in the meeting and how uh, could he participate and uh, uh, to help others and uh, get a benefit from uh, others. So uh, he should know what uh, he are going to do and uh, what he will uh, and how he will participate. All right, thank you very much. That's the end of your speaking test. Thank you. So, <clears throat> first of all, the thing that struck out the most was the pauses. When you speak, it's um, like this, uh, and there's a few more words, and then it goes on, and, and you spend more time going, mm, than you actually spend speaking. So that gets to affect you in several different ways. Um, your fluency, when it says here, um, where was it? Speaks at length, though may lose coherence at times due to repetition, self-correction, and hesitation. And so this is the, the pausing and the stopping after every few words. And so it's going to limit you to band six. Even though for your lexical resource, you were very good. You used a lot of high-level technical words when you were speaking about your field. And you used them with skill and flexibility. And so it, you could even get up as high as an 8 for your lexical resource. So it's between a 7 and an 8. Again, it would be easier to hear if your speech was more fluid. Um, grammatical range and accuracy. Again, it's harder to tell because of the stops and the starts. Um, but I did hear a range of structures with some flexibility frequently produces error-free sentences. It's hard to say. You're better than a six. I'm not sure that you're an eight, and so I would put you at a seven. Um, and then pronunciation. This again is affected by the ums and the um. And so it uh, breaks up your sentences. This pronunciation of individual words gets you up to about a band five, and then after this, it's about the flow of your speech and the stress on the important 
the meaning carrying words of your sentences. And so you didn't get this because of those stops and starts. And so I think you're going to get no more than a six. Show some effective use of features, but it's not sustained. Can generally be understood throughout. Yeah, your words are clear when you say them. So yeah, six. You get a six, I'll say an eight even for vocabulary. Six, eight, seven, six, eight, seven, six. So you, it's a six. 6.5, 6.5 I would say to a 7. Okay, Chris, uh, I want to ask you uh, a question. Yeah. Um, uh, during, uh, when I talk uh, for the two minutes, uh, uh, if I lagged or stopped, uh, what should I do? You mean you've run out of ideas? Yeah. If you run out of ideas, this means that you've got a problem with your planning and in the one minute t time limit, you haven't managed to think of enough ideas. And so it's through practicing and planning in your one minute to make sure that you get enough ideas in that you will, it'll make you successful. The, again, the whole thing about this is that two minutes is a very difficult thing to speak for if, you, if you're not used to doing it especially in a second language. And so my advice to everyone is to go through these books, these Cambridge IELTS books, every question for two minutes, practice speaking it. All of your writing exercises that you do, you should be planning them, doing planning stage and writing stage. When you have your outline for the planning stage, you should practice speaking it like it's a speech so that you can practice speaking for that two minute time period. It's the most important thing for you. If you can't speak for two minutes, you can't give a good language sample, and you can't show the examiner how hard you've been studying. And so that's my advice for you too. Practice makes perfect. Yes, yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, next. First, please, I will say something. It's an Egyptian joke. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, Khaled deserves uh, band three, as has uh, Zamalek Club Rule. <laughs> <laughs> I will, uh, I will understand you uh, later, Chris, about this. Sure, sure. Okay, uh, it's Sara now. Sara, now you can go. On. Hello. 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 Who's Hello, Chris. I'm here. Okay, Sarah. It's All right. Yes. This is the mock speaking test for the IELTS support Canadian Mosaic English language school testing system. The candidate is Sarah, and the examiner is Chris Enders. Zoom number nine one eight one one two eight nine five five. Good evening, my name is Chris Enders. Can you tell me your full name, please? Good evening, my name is Sarah Magdizuiri. And can you tell me where you're from, Sarah? I am from Egypt, Alexandria. And so in this first part, I'd like to ask you some questions about yourself. So let's talk yes, about where you live. Do you live in a house or an apartment? Well, I do live in an apartment. And what's it like? Well, it's nice. Um, it's in a quiet place. And I do like it so much. Why? Maybe because it's comfortable. Maybe because I've designed it myself. Um, in addition to living in it with my husband and my dear son. So that's why I, I do love it. And what are some convenient features of your apartment? By convenient, you mean things that I do like? Yeah. Okay, so um, I do love my room. And uh, I love the balcony because that's where I uh, grow some plants. And I love watering them every day and watching them grow. Mm -hmm. So that's it. 
And if you could change something about your apartment, what would you change? No, I believe I won't be changing my apartment. I'd be changing its place. Um, I want to move from this area because um, I'm not in love with the neighborhood. Why? Um, they're quite tough people. Um, they don't deal in a good way. Um, and I don't have a good relation with them. I don't have a relation with them in the first place. Not a good or a bad one. I don't have any. All right. Now I'm going to give you a topic. And you should talk about it for two minutes. Before you talk, okay. you should take one minute to make a plan. Do you understand? Yes. All right. So <clears throat> your topic is the first posted topic today from IELTS book eight, test number one. It is describe a time when you were asked to give an opinion on a questionnaire. You should say what the questionnaire was about, why you were asked to give your opinions, and explain how you felt. Can you begin preparing one minute now? All right, so remember to try to speak for the full two minutes. Can you begin speaking now, please? Okay, so today I'm going to talk about a questionnaire that I was asked to fill, where it was in the High Institute of Public Health, where I used to study for the diploma. Uh, the questionnaire was about the, what I thought about the methods of teaching, uh, the classes, um, the curriculum, and the time of the classes, whether it was fit or not, whether the method of the teachers was, uh, was nice, was, whether I could understand fully from them. Uh, secondly, um, they, I believe they have done this to improve the way of teaching, um, in addition to um, making sure that they are fit to the quality uh, issues, because um, based on the new system, they have uh, to be qualified in a certain way in order to get certain certificates. Uh, thirdly, uh, I felt about this that I was uh, relieved. I felt that my opinion was quite important and that it counts. That um, what I thought was uh, taken into account and considered and given quite importance. So yes, I think, it, I believe it was um, an incredible experience. And I believe this is a good thing. And I hope um, they take my opinion into real considerations and help them to improve. That's it. Do you often answer surveys? Mm, not that much. On certain times when I believe that uh, the institute um, asking for it is going to, um, to take it into account. That's when I do answer it. Okay. And so we've been talking about a time that you had to write a survey. And so let's continue talking about surveys in general. Um, okay. Are surveys a good way to gather information? Yes, I believe yeah, yes, but this is dependent on the way the survey is made. For example, there are various methods of surveying. There are the online ones, there are the ones that you um, answer at college or something by using paper and, and pen. There are ones that someone asks you the question. So I believe that if your name is not mentioned, if it is not known who writes what, uh, it's okay and people will answer it in, in an honest way. And so why, would, why are people more likely to answer it honestly if they're anonymous? 
Well, they will do this on one condition, that they believe that their opinion is quite important, that they believe that what they're going to be, what, what they're going to say is going to be taken into consideration. Uh, if they don't believe that, if they do believe that it's useless, then they won't do, waste their time answering it. Are there certain people who would just write wild answers for the purpose of skewing the results? No, could you please repeat the question? Do you think that there are some people who will write answers that are strange or unusual so that they can ruin the results? For example, yeah. in my culture, teenagers would do this. They would write, they would answer wrong on purpose. Yes, they, they might do this. Well, I believe they might do this um, just in case to, um, that they are obliged to answer the survey. Just to get rid of the survey so they answer it by any answers, not necessarily real ones. Um, Maybe that's why. What advice would you give to someone who must answer a survey? Well, I would advise them to um, answer clearly, to write clear answers, because sometimes people write things that could not be read or or understood, to answer it um, in a real way, to answer it, to, to express how they feel and the real opinions, not to be shy or embarrassed about anything. Thank you very much. That's the end of your speaking Thank test. You, yes. Okay. You. So, this was a very good test, Sarah. You were speaking fluently. You didn't need to repeat yourself. And you spoke logically, often from a main idea to a reason or a definition and then to a specific example. Your structure and your ease of speaking were eight. Lexical resource, this also was very good. You had a high level of resource and you didn't make mistakes when you were using it. Your collocations were well and in control. Very nice. Again, eight for lexical resource. Grammar and accuracy, also very nice. A lot of different kinds of sentences, different tenses. Eight. And pronunciation, also no problem with understanding. I heard pausing at the right times when there were supposed to be pauses. And I heard the continual utterances over long sentences. And so I would say eight as well. Band eight for you, Sarah. Good job. Thank you, Chris. You're welcome. Band eight. Yes. A piece of chocolate. A piece of chocolate, yeah. Okay. Can we take another one? The last one? The last one? Sure. We can fit one more in. Okay. Go on, Mr. Ehab. Hello. Hello. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, here we go. This is the mock speaking test for the IELTS Support Canadian Mosaic English Language School training system. The candidate is Ehab and the examiner is Chris Enders. Hello, my name is Chris Enders. Can you tell me your full name, please? Okay, my name is Ehab Alain. And what can I call you? Ihab. And can, can you tell me where you're from, Ihab? Yeah, I'm from Egypt, a government which is called uh, Sharkia. And in this first part, I'd like to ask you some questions about yourself. So let's talk about what you do. Do you work or do you study? Okay. Actually, I am a worker. Uh, I want to start off by pointing out that, that I'm an emergency physician that uh, work in uh, Nazi Institute. It's a uh, tertiary hospital which is located in Cairo and it serves all the people from the surroundings. Uh, another uh, on top of that, I want to add that uh, uh, I also work in uh, my government, Sharkia, in El Ahran Hospital, which is a tertiary hospital. Do you think your job is a stressful job? Uh, when I think about it, uh, I suppose I would have to say that 
it's fairly right because my job uh, depends on uh, the road traffic accidents. Uh, so uh, you have to uh, deal with all the critical uh, cases. So you have to work flat out. And uh, in addition to that, you have to uh, pick up all the pieces when there is a condition in which you have to take responsibility. So a stress is a you common feature. Uh, job to other people? Uh, I, I can't hear you. Can you rephrase yourself, please? Would you recommend your job to other people? Um, actually, I can recommend it. Although there is a lot of stress in my job, but you can deal with the patient at his first place. You can save his life. If you are a professional person, if you can uh, uh, follow the guidelines of the emergency medicine, you can change a lot of lives uh, in, in a new area. So I recommend all people to take an, an, uh, the emergency medicine as a specialty in medicine. So now let's continue with um, parks. Are there any nice parks near where you live? Parks? Yes. Um, there is uh, a few a few parks, um, maybe one or two. Not all of parks. It is not a popular thing in my uh, in my government. Mm. Um, what makes a park a good place to go? Uh, a park is a, is an essential thing because uh, it uh, uh, make you get rid of uh, the crowdedness. Uh, because in my can in my government, uh, the people when they are uh, going to any uh, place. Uh, they just uh, play their, uh, their cars in the street and that uh, make a lot of traffic jams so it will be a good thing to, uh, to uh, build more and more of the parks. In, uh, in, in now, I'm going to give you a question and the question is the second posted question from test two in the Cambridge Isles book eight. Describe a restaurant that you enjoyed going to. You should say where the restaurant was, why you chose the restaurant, what type of food you ate, and why you enjoy eating in this restaurant. You understand? Yeah. You have two minutes to speak for this and one minute for planning. Begin planning now, please. Okay. Alright, so remember you should try to speak for the full two minutes for this. Can you begin speaking now, please? Okay. I guess I could start by saying something about the restaurant that I enjoyed going to. And I suppose I would choose a restaurant which is called Muka, which is located in Cairo, in the city center. Going on to the second point, which is why I chose this restaurant. Actually, the reason behind that that a lot of people uh, talked about it and uh, they were talking that uh, they, uh, as they are serving a scrumptious food and uh, uh, on top of that, it, uh, they, uh, they were talking that it's a, a very swanky restaurant. Uh, drawing attention to the third point, which is what type of food I ate there. Uh, I can say that I ate a pizza, and the reason behind uh, 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 behind I ate pizza that the owner of the restaurant is an Italian. 
a guy in which uh, were living in Italy for 10 years and after that he came to Egypt to, uh, to uh, make money. Actually, he was a poor man, so he had to live from hand to mouth. And when he came to Egypt, he, he decided to open that restaurant. And uh, what I enjoyed in the pizza, that it was out of this world, and that the owner of the restaurant, he is a guy who is making that pizza, and he is making it from scratch. Uh, the, the last thing that I want to speak about, if there is time, is I recommend all people to go there. Uh, of course, it is a swanky restaurant, so it will set you off a lot of money, but uh, in front of that, you will eat a pizza that you have Maybe. never ate before. Now, we've been talking about a time that you went to a restaurant, and I'd like to discuss restaurants in general with you. And so, in this first part, let's talk about eating out. Is it common to eat out where you live? Is it what? Common to eat out where you live. Yeah, of course, of course. There is an extensive diversity of places that you can eat in. Uh, but I think the most uh, popular uh, in my uh, governorate is uh, the, pizza, the pizza restaurant. Why? Uh, of course. Uh, the pizza, I think, that uh, calls all, uh, the, all members of a family uh, can agree that a pizza is a common thing that they, uh, they love. So uh, when you want to go a place uh, and you don't want any problems, uh, if, uh, problems in choosing the species that you eat, you will decide to go uh, to uh, a pizza restaurant. Mm -hmm. Um, is it expensive to eat in a restaurant where you live? Um, a little bit. Uh, it, the, the high fares that the restaurants have to pay every month make it uh, expensive to eat in my uh, area. So I think, yes, it is a little bit expensive. Mm. Um, is restaurant food healthy? Uh, certainly not. It's not healthy at all, cause it contains a lot of uh, uh, a lot of uh, lipid, which is harm to your body. It can cause a lot of uh, diseases like atherosclerosis, heart attacks, uh, myocardial infarctions, and so on. So you should go eating in a restaurant once a month. That's what I recommend for people to do. All right, thank you very much. That's the end of your speaking test. Thank you. Okay. Uh -huh. Speaks at length without noticeable effort. This is a band seven comment. May demonstrate language related hesitation at times or some repetition. Yeah. This is what I'm hearing. Uses a range of connectives and discourse markers with some flexibility. Yes, I heard lots of different discourse markers. I heard a few mistakes with them, but yes, so that gets you some flexibility. I'm going to give you a seven for your fluency and coherence. For your lexical resource, your vocabulary, your lexical resource was very broad. You have a lot of words, and then you put in a lot of technical words, too, from medicine, which were good. But the difference between your vocabulary and the one from the test that came directly before you was accuracy. Um, accuracy in the exact meaning of the word. The person that spoke before was very precise and got very clear with the meanings. Your meanings of your words when you're using similes, the meaning is not exactly the same as the meaning of the word that you are replacing. And so it puts in 5%, 3% difference in the meaning of that word. And so those things kind of add up over time. 
um, and the inaccuracy keeps you out of that band eight range. And so though you've got the wide vo vocabulary, there were too many mistakes or for agreements, collocations as well with those big words. If you don't use them the right way, then you don't hit the eight, you stay with the seven. Um, grammar. Grammar was good. I was listening and listening and trying to decide, is it a seven or is it an eight? How many mistakes there were. And I was listening for prepositions and articles, and for the most part, they were very good. However, there were a few times where I noticed um, wrong prepositions on things. Um, you did use the wide range of stuff, and so the question is, does it meet, produces a majority of error-free sentences with only occasional inappropriacies or basic and non-systemic errors? Yeah, I think you're a very, very strong seven, but I'm not sure that you're all the way to an eight yet. And then pronunciation. Pronunciation was no problem. Your speech was a little slow the natural pace, but I don't think it really hurts you. Um, I would say, ooh, yeah, again, very, very strong seven to an eight. And so in total, I would say seven, seven, yeah, you're a seven point, can I give you a 7.5? Because 7.5 means two eights, and I'm not sure you've got two, two eights. Seven, seven, eight, eight, yeah. You're a very strong seven. A, a kind examiner may give you a 7.5, but it's, you've got everything you need. You just need more fluency practice, more training with these part two questions to get it to come out a little more naturally, and then in your writing practice to fix up those small mistakes that you have with the accuracy of your vocabulary and your connectives. But that's something that's very difficult to fix in your speaking. You have to do it through your writing because once it's on the page, then you can see those mistakes and you can see the pattern mistakes that you make and it's those patterns that you need to fix. In the eight here, it says you have very occasional inappropriacies on basic and non-systemic errors. And so this means that sometimes you may make a mistake with an article, but it's not more than two or three times over your whole utterance. And so that's what you need to watch for, and the, the best way to see it is in your writing. So. You're very close to 7.5, and from there, it's not a big leap to an 8. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So, I think that's all the time that we have today, Ahmed. Yep. Uh, actually, Chris, uh, I don't know how I can thank you or any member how he can thank you for this amazing session. Oh, it's nothing. Thank you very much. What I'd like to point out, though, is that these tests today are shortened. On a standard IELTS test, you're going to get between 12 and 13 minutes of speaking. And today, people got eight minutes of speaking. We shortened up the part one. Part two of the two minutes speaking was unchanged. And then we shortened up part two, or sorry, part three, by a couple of questions so that we could get more people in. Um, so again, it's important to note that I am not currently or I am not anymore a certified IELTS examiner. And so these scores that I'm giving you are my own opinions based on the questions that you answered today. And you should use them for advice for your training. So thank you very much for thank you very much for everyone who volunteered to join us today and please come back and watch us again on Wednesday. Thank you Ahmed for hosting us today. 
Thanks, Chris.